So I think it's driven by the labor market. You know, they're pretty much, they've arrived on their inflation goal. Even if you strip out transit, which I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that word <laughs> uh, this year, but um, even stripping that out, inflation is not the worry. Uh, it's the labor market, right? That's where they're focused. And we've uh, started to see the pickup in labor supply. Uh, we're in line with Chair Powell's thinking that September and October is sort of critical there where unemployment benefits are running out. Teachers are uh, back at schools that are fully reopened and people can go back to work uh, uh, more fully. And so you've got a bump in labor supply that's coming. That's going to keep these jobs numbers heightened. That means that by the end of the year, we should have closed uh, more than half of the uh, the way to the job losses that we've seen um, since uh, COVID began, or specifically Lael Brainerd, Governor Brainerd, talked about comparing to December of last year. And so we've closed the gap enough that we think that's what the Fed will see as substantial further progress on the labor market. And certainly by then, they will have communicated along the way that they're ready to start tapering. So people will come back to work. They will sop up many of the job openings that are out there now. The unemployment rate will get closer to what the Fed has basically targeted, which is getting back to pre-pandemic levels reasonably soon. So you expect December of this year to be the time when they will start uh, making an announcement about how and when they will start uh, not buying so many bonds. When do you think they will actually bring into effect that slowing of purchases? And when do you think they might turn to raising interest rates? Yeah, so the, the uh, official announcement of tapering really is on the cusp of actually beginning it. So, okay. so at that December FOMC, FOMC meeting, you'd basically be saying, we've had all the discussions we're going to discuss. We've come to consensus on the scope, the, the timing, the composition of tapering our purchases. And we're going to begin... Janu come January, uh, first business day of January. Gotcha. And so it, it starts basically immediately. Now, this won't come as a surprise when they make the official announcement in December, because from now until then, they'll be continuing along these baby steps toward right. taper. That's so that it's not a surprise to markets by the time it comes. So the next thing to watch for is the minutes later this month from the last FOMC meeting. How close were they to consensus? We've got Chair Pallet, Jackson Hole in late August. We've got the September FOMC meeting. So they're going to be stepping us toward that date. We're still quite a ways off from hiking rates. So there's two different hurdles you have to leap here. The first is substantial further progress toward inflation goal mm -hmm. and maximum employment. That's why we expect the December announcement for the taper. The goal to actually begin to raise rates is that you have to have arrived. And so that takes quite a bit more time, say, unemployment rate back to pre-pandemic level at the least. In fact, we think that by the end of next year, we're already back below the pre-pandemic level on the unemployment rate because we think that there will be structural uh, impediments to a good deal of folks coming back from the labor market. That means a, it's easier mm -hmm. to get to a lower unemployment rate. So we don't think they raise rates until the second quarter of 2023. Uh, and that they raise rates about two times a year. That is a bit right. faster than what the market is pricing in right now. Our rate strategists have been uh, short duration, uh, and so they are they are uh, positioned for yields to move Fantastic. higher here because the market expectations are just too low.